Good afternoon, ladies and uh, gentlemen. May I extend my gratitude to DG Dr. Arvind Gupta and Colonel Gautam, and uh, gratitude to the audience who is here. My talk today is on Kautilya's Arthashastra, an approach to counter insurgency strategy. It's a risk which I have taken, and I would like to say that uh, I'm not here to provide you with a strategy as such. I would like to put more questions in your mind at the end of the talk. I would like to provoke your thoughts. It is not a prescription which I am going to present today. We are going to talk about the concepts at the macro level. We have a definite framework in Arthashastra, which has uh, timelessness about it, and the concepts are applicable even today. That is what we are going to look at. We shall take a look at a different perspective, the internal dynamics within a state, the external dynamics within a state, realism, liberalism which exists. As we understand in the, if I may say so, the Western philosophy as such or international relations, as it was alluded to by the earlier speakers as well. How I am going to go through the presentation, what are the different things that we are going to look at? What is most critical in this uh, talk would be the transition of a state from a state of uh, decline, stabilization, and to advancement. This is precisely what is the basic underlying principle that we are going to look at, number one, and how are we going to achieve this? What is the most critical element within a state? Unambiguously, Kautilya brings out that it is the population of a state. We are going to see how, how does it occur. So everything has to center around the population. If that is so, then what are the other elements? We are also going to take a look at the contemporary Western strategies and see how our concepts and the Western concepts match or are they similar or is there any thing that we need to look at and see that the ancient concepts which existed in 3rd century BC or 4th century BC, are they applicable even today and do we talk in a similar language today? As covered earlier, this is what we are looking at. The aim of the state is to ensure that we achieve a state of progress or advancement and how do we go about doing it? And if you look at insurgency as such, it is exactly opposite. It is in the reverse direction that the insurgency or the insurgent wants the state to move from advancement so that he can carry out stabilization operations and then a decline where he can strike and with his political motive, he can capture power. How is insurgency defined by Kautilya? Kautilya defines insurgency as calamities due to acts of men. He also enumerates that it is created by the failed policies of the state. And how do the Westerners define insurgency? It is an armed rebellion against the state. There are numerous definitions for the same. You can look at the US uh, Department of Defense definition and you will find something similar. But what is the most critical element in this? It is the support of the population that is essential for the insurgency to survive. And when you look at the state, it is again the support of the population that is essential to eradicate insurgency. When we look at Arthashastra, the basic premise of Arthashastra, when we look at it, it talks about artha being the material well-being of the individuals. Please understand we are talking here about the individuals. So how does we, how do we go about ensuring the welfare and well-being of the individuals? The responsibility of the state is to safeguard the economic welfare of people, protection of people from external aggression provide internal security and ensure law and order. 
And if we look at what Cautilia says, as far as the economy is concerned, he says a king who impoverishes his own people or angers them by unjust exactions will also lose their loyalty. Therefore, is it, it is essential for a state to ensure that uh, economic policies are oriented towards the welfare of the people. Again, when the focus is on the population, it is very clearly brought out by Kautilya that it was also spoken about by Aditya today in the morning. In the happiness of his subjects lies the king's happiness. In their welfare, his welfare. He shall not consider as good only that which pleases him, but treat as beneficial to him whatever pleases his subjects. So what we see here is, what is the centrality? It is the population. It is the people of the state. So this is what is being emphasized, that it centers on the population. So all our strategies, all our policies have to fall within this ambit if it is to be successful. If it is not oriented towards this, then the chances of success are minimal. But, well, we look at uh, contemporary strategists, counterinsurgency strategists as such, French uh, officer from the army, clearly brings out five principles as far as counterinsurgency is concerned. And the first principle what he talks about is the objective is population. And then he moves about going further talking about the population wherein he states that the support of the population is obtained through the minority which favors the counterinsurgent. And this is utilized to influence the majority which is neutral and the minority will emerge only if the counterinsurgent is perceived as a victor. That means the partial success is very essential to ensure that the majority also moves towards the counterinsurgent. The resources are limited as far as the state or as far as the counterinsurgents are concerned. Therefore, he brings out that it is essential that you concentrate your efforts area by area. And in the final stage, as the war lasts, war itself becomes the central issue. And the ideological issues go into the background. And then the people ask two important questions. Who is going to win the war? Who is going to provide me protection? This is going to decide the future course of action. Another French strategist who operated in Algeria is very clear what you see on the screen that the emphasis is purely on the unconditional support of the population. In fact, Mao Zedong also talks about the same when he says that it is very essential for the support of population to be there. It is like a fish without water otherwise. David Kulkulin, a counterinsurgency specialist, brings out that uh, counterinsurgency strategy should be population centric. Now, before we get into any kind of an approach towards a strategy, what is essential is we take a look at uh, the prominent constraints of a state. This was also spoken by the other speakers, we find that predominantly the political leadership, economy and military are the critical elements in a state. But however, we have seen the efficacy of the population and the policies being oriented towards that. So the dynamics should revolve around these elements but oriented towards the population. And an in interesting aspect here is that can consider the political leadership denoting or symbolizing the prestige, the economy, the wealth, and the military, the security. If you see, these are very important elements or you can call them as 
the national interests of a state as well, prestige, wealth and security. You can uh, take a look at the micro level when we are talking about the individuals as such or at the macro level when we are talking about the state. You will find that the needs of the people are similar, prestige, wealth and security. And when we look at the needs of the state, it is similar, security, wealth and prestige. So these form the important elements which we need to consider. And when you look at the prestige part of it, it is encompassing. For instance, when we talk about the people, the values, social values, ideological values, religious, culture is all part of the same. So this is an important thing and which has to be kept in mind before you formulate any strategy as such for counter insurgency. We have talked about prakritis since morning and we are very clear about this. But what I would like to bring out here is on the right you can see Mitra, Tanda, Bala, Durga, Kosa, Janapada, Rashtra, Amatya and Swami. It is actually in the reverse order because the diagram is such. You can relate Swami to the leadership, political, Janapada, Rashtra to the governing body, correction, Amatya to governing body, Janapada to the population, Kosa is the treasury which can relate to the economy, Durga is primarily a fort or a form of a defense which is provided so you have the infrastructure which is essential for your defense, Danda, Bala, this is primarily about the military, what we are talking about, Mitra, allies. So if we again take a look at this, we are talking about political, then you have governance, you have social, cultural, then you have economy, infrastructure, the military and diplomacy. So if you take a broader look at it, what are these elements? They all form part of the comprehensive national power. You have to consider all these elements when you formulate or approach towards formulation of a counter insurgent strategy at the macro level. Now we take a look at David Kilkelen's uh, theory and principles for formulation of a strategy for counter insurgency as such. You will find a striking resemblance for the, towards the same. He is talking about the same elements. He's talking about political strategy to build government effectiveness and legitimacy, political, which was the Swami. Synchronization of development, governance and security efforts, governance, which you can see here, Amatya, population centric security and policies, Janapada, economic institutions, Kosa, policies to build infrastructure, I would say Durga. Comprehensive approach by military, Danda, Bala. Diplomatic means to undermine insurgent infrastructure in your neighboring countries. So you have the Mitra. One very important element which Kautilya brings out in Artha Shastra is intelligence. And intelligence forms a very important or key element in counter insurgency operations which is, includes surveillance, reconnaissance of own enemy and also allies, gather intelligence in order to ensure security internally and also from external threats. I would actually like to see the four upayas, samadana, bheda, danda to be utilized for uh, providing internal security. However, Kautilya is very clear that you cannot confine it to only internally, can be utilized against other states as well. We will not go into the details of this, we have spoken about these upayas and additional ones as well since morning. But for external uh, threats, what is essential is what you see, 
on the screen Sadgunya, in which you see what is important is what measures can be applied is depicted by the power, relative power, which you can see moving from weak, strong, powerful to dominant. So, this will help you decide depending on the strategic environment and dynamics of the situation as to what measure to employ and what are the four kinds of war which we talked about in the morning are also depicted. You have Mantra Yuddha and other Tusnim Kuta Prakash Yuddha depending on the relative power which can be employed. And also power, we discussed about this power is quite uh, elaborate how Kautilya describes and uh, how you can utilize it for formulation of this strategy as such. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have finished. I thank you for your kind and patient hearing. Thank you.